Hello and welcome back to part three. So to continue off, first of all, let's go ahead and I would like to show you a cool little trick um, with the, the blueprints. You can go to uh, capture thumbnail and it'll capture the viewport. And I really like this so that way when I'm browsing through the files, I know exactly what to look for. I don't have to read everything. So we'll go ahead and we'll save it. Now let's go into the blocks and let's make a new actor and let's call it block base. So the nice thing about uh, parent and child classes is that we can just have one parent class put all the functionality, all the variables, everything, and then we can just make uh, create child blueprints from it. And all we have to do is just change a couple default values and we're done. So with this new block actor created, let's go ahead and open it. Let's go ahead and let's search for a scene root or just scene I guess I'm gonna name it root and I'm gonna make that the new parent and I'm gonna go to write and unlit and yeah everything's right so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna add a sprite paper sprite we're gonna name this piece a and let's go ahead and well well first before we do that um you know what no we'll go ahead we'll assign this to be the x block okay and then we'll take it and we want to line it up about right here and now we're going to go ahead and duplicate it and we'll call this next piece b so we'll move piece b over here and to make it easier, I'm going to set the snap size to 16. And we'll go ahead and duplicate it again. This one will be called C. Take that. Bring it over here. Line it. It really, for the base class, it really doesn't matter how you line this up or how you set it up. But I'm just going to go ahead and lay it out so it looks nice. So I'll go ahead and duplicate it again. And we're going to name this one D. And this is the last and final one. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and make a nice helper function. And you're going to see why I'm going to make this in a minute. So let's go ahead and name this, let's name this function pieces as array. And we're going to make it pure. And we're going to take one of these. We're going to do like a little shortcut. Um, so that way, because when we do a return node, uh, you have to go through here and search for the variable you want to use and you might select the wrong one and it's kind of annoying so I'm just going to take this and plug it in like that and then I'll disconnect it call this value and then I'm going to change it to be an array and then we're going to get all the pieces so A, B, C, and D so with all the pieces out all of them in order make sure they're in order that is very important we're going to use a make array i'll plug that in and now we're done with our first uh helper function and the reason that i'm doing this is so that way because we're going to run we're going to use uh make a lot of functions on these and it'd be really nice to have them as an array instead of doing them one at a time so the next thing we need to do and this is i'm kind of doing this a bit earlier but this is just to help us out we're going to go to blueprints, create an enumeration, and name it centerpiece en. So go ahead and add four entries and start with A and go all the way to D. And I did name this wrong. I'm going to change this to be piece letter en. So change the name to piece letter en. So by changing the name, um, we can actually, it, it makes more sense and it makes it easier to read the code. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make an input of boolean um, not an array we don't want it to be an array and we're going to call it skip center now this isn't really going to make sense right now but just so you know so on one of the pieces so a b c or d the child blueprints are going to rotate around that piece so and the reason we want to skip it and I'm going to refer to that piece as the center for the children blocks or children actors. 
Um, the reason I'm just putting this in early because there might be times when we don't want to access it. We just want to get the other three pieces. So that's why I'm doing this. So go ahead and add a branch. And then on the false condition, just have all of them plugged in. And then for the true condition, first we need to go ahead and make one more variable and call it center piece and go ahead and search for that enumeration that we just made and we'll use that as the variable okay so after we have that we're actually we're going to just leave it for right now and we'll come back to this later but we'll just have this set up for later on and you can still go ahead and add this variable we will probably need it uh very soon so let's go ahead and close out of everything as of right now we don't need any of these okay so let's go back and let's take a screenshot of this. So capture thumbnail, just so that way it looks nicer and we we can quickly see uh, the uh, the blueprint class that we need and everything. Uh, I'm gonna remove this from the scene. So we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of structures. And the first one is gonna be called piece data. So go ahead and open that. And the first one is gonna be called block sprite. We're gonna change this to be a paper sprite component. Object reference. I'm gonna add another one called point, and that's gonna be the previous struct we made in the other video, or the last part. So we're gonna add one more variable, we're gonna name it point, and then we're gonna use the point structure that we made. So piece point. Then we just need one more, and that'll be a Boolean. And it's just going to be called destroyed. Okay, so everything looks good. We'll go ahead and save it. And we'll make another struct. So we're going to name it block data. I'll go ahead and open that up. I'm going to change this to be piece A. And we're going to use the previous struct that we just made. Now, after you've made it once, you can just click on the new variable uh, four times. And it will copy over the last variable that you set it to. So you don't have to keep searching for it. And all these are going to be named piece A, B, C, and D. Okay, so after we've done that, now let's go ahead and go back to the block base. And we'll make another variable. And we're going to call this block data. And we'll go ahead and use the last struct that we just made, which is block data. So okay, now that you've done that, we have four pieces and four object pieces. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate this one more time. Okay, so we're going to name this new function grid data as array. And we're going to switch this out. We're going to change the output pin just to make it easier. So you don't have to search for it. Like I mentioned earlier, um, go ahead and just break the grid, the block data that you made. And don't don't plug in the block data. You want to plug in the piece, one of these pieces in and then change it to be an array and change the output name to be value. And we're going to use a make array node, and then we're going to plug everything in. And like I said, um, we're, go we're going to come back to this later on, but it'll just be here for later. So with that made, we'll go ahead and compile and save. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make one more helper function, and then we can get into block movement. So now that we've made these two helper functions, so let's go ahead and make a new function. We're going to call this set block data index. And we're going to, the input is just going to be an integer, no array, and it's just going to be called index. And there is no return node on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take grid data as array. Okay, so actually I missed one function. Now before we set this, we need to make one more function. I'm going to call this function grid data from array. We're going to make it pure. And I would like to reorder this to have it more organized. So the input's going to be an array. So go ahead, we'll do the shortcut method. We'll break it once again. Don't plug in block data, plug in piece A. Let's plug that in. Now we're gonna make this an array. And we're just gonna call this array. And then it's just going to return. This time you wanna plug in block data as the output and name it value. And we're going to use the break struct and now we're going to just do a git copy of index zero. And we're going to go ahead and paste three more, copy and paste three more. And we're going to plug in the array 
to all of them and then plug all of them in order make sure they're in order into the make struct now the first one is zero the second one is index one the third one is index two and the fourth one is index three like i said because we have basically what we've been doing is we've been making like i said helper functions so we have grid data as array so maybe we want to manipulate some of the uh, grid data points and we don't want to have to use a break node and we also want to be able to use a for loop because that will make it a lot easier but after we're done with the for loop we can call this function which, which will convert it back into the struct so that's basically what we're making to make it a lot easier to make it a lot easier on ourselves so go ahead and save that so we're going to come back to set block data index and we're going to use the grid data as array and basically what we're going to do is we're going to set an index in this block data so if you break it you can imagine a as being 0 b being 1 c 2 and d 3 and that's basically what this is going to correspond to so we're going to promote this to be a local variable we're just going to name it array underscore l and then we're going to take it and we're going to use a set array element and we're going to plug in the index and the item we want to go ahead and use that for one of the inputs i actually forgot that and we're just going to name it we're going to change the name to be value or new value so now that we have that and it's been set now we're going to take so see, see how we made so notice how we made that last function um, this is one of the reasons why it'll really help us out we can just plug in this grid data and since we made a copy of it we set that index to a new value now we can just copy it again and then turn it into and set the block data to it and we're done we don't have to do we don't have to do a bunch of for loops or uh, for each loops or a mess of nodes and switch statements so we can go ahead and compile and save. So now that we have all these made, let's go ahead and add another function. And we're going to call this letter to index. And we're going to make it pure. And it's going to return an integer. And we'll name it value. And it should not be an array. So we're going to use the convert byte to integer. And we're going to plug this in. This is also another helpful function. So now with all those out of the way, I'm going to reorder this again and let's put these in a category of helper so let's go ahead and make another function and we're going to name it update column down and what this is going to do is it's going to take well first before i say that i should mention we have this variable which is going to contain so piece a remember this is piece a this is piece b c and d so like i said it's going to correspond so when we update it, when we move the block down, we're going to take the column that it's on from point, and we're going to subtract it by one. So every single time we want to move it down, we're going to subtract it by one. So that way, back in the Tetris, when we were using this for the point and the row, we can use that to check and see if that grid position is empty or full. So I hope you're you're still caught up and understand everything that's going on so far. I did kind of speed through a, a bit of it. But when we do update down, we're going to take grid data as array, do a for each loop, and we're going to break the struct. And we're going to break the point. Uh, let's also promote this to let's well, let's make a local variable from this because we're going to reuse this. So promote to local variable. And again, I'm going to call it array probably should name it something better but go ahead and we will add add a value to it and we're going to add what this struct is what it currently is but the column minus one so we'll go ahead break that again and make sure you plug everything back in so now that we've done this really quickly um, let's go ahead and make a function library so that way we don't have to keep breaking this struct, subtracting one or adding one could because we're going to be doing that a lot later. So let's go ahead and make a function library. Go to blueprints and click on function library. I'm just going to name it function library. And for the first function and probably the only function we're going to use. So for the first function and probably the only function that we're going to make, 
So let's name it update point. We're going to make it pure. And for the two inputs and outputs, let's go ahead and cheat and copy and paste this array over here. So we can plug this in for the input. We'll delete that. And then we're going to make the same output, the output the same. And we'll name this the output value. And then the input, we'll just name it input. And now we need two, uh, two other inputs. It's going to be integer called row. And the other one is also going to be an integer. And we'll call it column or call for short. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the output. So we'll go ahead, we'll break these, we'll plug everything in except for the point. So we'll take the point, we'll break it, and we'll break it. And we're just going to do an add on it, add integer. And now basically what we're doing is that way we don't have to continuously break the block and then do these and everything we can just simply we can get rid of this uh, update point we can call that function update points and now all we have to do is just the column minus no plus one yeah plus one because it's actually backwards when it's going down it, we're actually adding to the column we're not subtracting and compile and save so now that we've done that we can go ahead so actually before we continue on let's go ahead and we're going to make one more input called steps now this is basically because we might not want it the piece just to go down one we might want it to go down multiple times and you'll see what i mean later so let's promote this to a local variable and we'll go ahead and plug in steps and now when we're done we can go ahead and we'll do set actor location we'll add a return node as well and what we're going to do is we're going to get the actor location get actor location and because we're going down we're going to subtract it now i've seen a lot of videos of people where they go they'll break the vector and then they'll go and subtract it and plug it in and then plug everything else in and you can do that that works but also you can just take you just take a minus vector from vector and just plug that in and then just set the value once and you're all set you don't have to do any more than that but we're not done just yet we do need to break it and we need to do a multiply an int multiplied by float and now the integer is 32 because this block this piece is 32 by 32 and i would like to know if you're using a different artwork um, it does have to be it has to be square in order for this to work but let's say you have an artwork and it's 128 by 128 you would set this to be 128 and it will work so just keep that in mind and actually you you want to set the the size to the float and for steps we're going to use the integer and now before we forget and break something let's go ahead and this array that we've just that we've you know added to we need to set the block data to equal that. So we'll pull out that function we did again. And we'll plug it in. Okay, so now that you've done that, so we have all the helper functions. Um, they're all set up for right now. We might need to add more in the future. For right now, this is a really good start. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, but before I do that, I would also like to mention I do have a Patreon. So you can check that out in the description if you'd like to help support me. And as well as you can even get the executable um, for free if you'd like to play it and see, you know, um, the results of everything. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part.